and welcome again to the dynamic program, Times of Refreshing. I am Minister Shola Waldron Joseph, and it's indeed a privilege for me being here with you this morning. Before we go into today's message, let us please take this opportunity to pray. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks. God, we thank you because today is a great day. It's a marvelous day. It's a splendid day because this is the day that you, God, have made. And indeed, we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we commit this day into your hands. We commit everything that will be done in this day into your hands. We commit the word that we are about to share, oh God. We commit your audience in your hands, great God. We commit everybody that is going to view both online and TV viewers, great God. We pray, God, that they will receive your word with an open heart this morning, great God. And it will indeed bring about change in their lives for good. So, God, we just commit this time into your hands. We bless your word. We thank you because it's already blessed and settled in heaven, great God. And we thank you for a great morning in Jesus' name. Amen. My topic for this morning is overcoming the power of of discouragement. Let me repeat that. Overcoming the power of discouragement. In order to truly understand the true meaning of this theme, it is imperative that we understand the meaning of some crucial terms. Let me first define the term overcome. According to the Encarta Online Dictionary, to overcome means to conquer a problem, to defeat somebody, to win despite of obstacles, to defeat or to prevail over, to triumph over, to rise above, and to overpower. Let me now define the term power. Power is defined as control and influence over other people and their actions. It is also defined as the ability to influence people's judgment or emotions. It's a force. It's dominance and control. Finally, let me define the term discouragement. Discouragement is defined as a state of being disheartened, dispirited, downcast, depressed, dejected, and honest enthusiastic. It's a situation where nobody feels good. You feel less motivated. You are not confident and you are not optimistic. Let us go to the word of God. This morning we are basing this short discourse on the text taken from 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 1 to 6 and it reads, and it came to pass when David and his men will come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burnt it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burnt with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. And Neoha, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me repeat that. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. This morning we are speaking on the topic, overcoming the power 
of discouragement. The Bible states that because David was greatly distressed, he was discouraged. That is why he had to encourage himself. And he then encouraged himself in God. Remember, to overcome means to defeat something. So this morning I'm encouraging you to defeat the stronghold of discouragement over your life. I know that I'm speaking to people that are discouraged. There are times in our life that we become discouraged. Things are not going your way. You become disheartened according to the description. You become dejected and depressed. And you don't feel good about yourself. It's not a nice situation. Depression is so bad and discouragement is so bad. It, it takes you to a point that sometimes you need medical help. And this morning, I want to show you ways of overcoming the stronghold, the power of discouragement. First, I want to highlight some pertinent points. What causes discouragement? What are some of the things that might cause a person to become discouraged? One, sin and a feeling of guilt and shame. When we commit sin, when we transgress God's word, when we go against his law, when we live lives that don't bring glory to God, when we live lives that are unrighteous and unholy before God, we become discouraged. Let us go to Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1. And it reads, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. God is talking to his people here. He said, look unto me. You want to live a righteous life? The only way of accomplishing such is to follow after God, is to seek after God, is to live according to the word of God, is to live according to the precepts of God. And the Bible is saying this morning that we ought to follow God. If we want to live lives that are not full of sin and, and we don't live lives that when we are finished living the lifestyle and we feel guilty, the Bible is saying, seek after the Lord. Seek after the rock from which you were hewn, where you came from. Go back to that source. Seek after, run after God. Pant after God like the deer, the songwriter says, pant after the water. Pant after God as the day. And then and only then you will be able to live a righteous life. This is what the Bible is saying this morning. So our first point is sin and a feeling of guilt and shame brings about discouragement. The Bible goes on to say that we ought to shun the very appearance of that which is evil. Don't even go close by it. Don't try to get a closer look. Don't try to view it a bit closer. Shun the very appearance of evil. Shun the very appearance of that which looks like sin. Don't get close to it. Don't dabble in it. Because sin, and a, when, when committed, brings about a feeling of guilt and shame. And it then brings on the spirit of discouragement. You feel discouraged. How could I go to church now and sit and listen to the word of God after I've done this act? But thank God there's forgiveness with the Father. Thank God that he's a forgiving God. But we ought not to be persistent in delving in sin. We ought not to make it a habit. We ought not to make it our lifestyle. We ought to seek things that are holy and, and just seek after those things. Go after those things, the Bible said. If you want to follow righteousness, then you need to seek the Lord. Secondly, what brings about the feeling of discouragement? When we focus on life issues and problems and not on the word of God. Brethren, when we focus, when we put all our attention on the issues of life and we don't meditate, yeah, the Bible said when, when God was speaking to, to Joshua, he said, meditate on this book of the law day and night. Don't let it depart from you. In doing this, you will make your way prosperous and you will indeed have good success. So God wants us not to focus on the issues of life. Yes, 
We are going to be confronted with issues on a daily basis. The Bible declares that we are living in this world, but we are not of this world. We are residing here. So all the issues that will face a man that has not committed his life to God will face us. Yes. We will have Goliaths in our lives. We will be faced with mountains and issues and problems like anybody else. But we ought to focus on the word of God. We ought to meditate on that word. That word that God told Joshua to meditate on the book of the law, which is the word of God. God said to Joshua, meditate upon it. Think upon it. Make it your tea and your breakfast and your dinner. Think about it. Concentrate on it. Always have it ever before you. Because it's only the word of God that will guide our footsteps. In this chaotic world. Think on the word. Day and night. Meditate upon it. Let it not be far from you. Because whenever we take our mind of God. And God's word. Yes we will become discouraged. Because the issues now. Will look like mountains before us. And they will look like Goliaths before us. But let me inform you. That there is always a word. In the book. Of the law of the Bible concerning every situation that we will encounter in this life. There's always a word. There's always a word of advice. There's always a word of rebuke. There's always a, a word of chastening in God's word. And if we continue to meditate upon it, we will find the word that suits our situation on a daily basis. So we ought to focus and meditate on God's word. Another thing that causes discouragement is when we don't feel that genuine love and concern from other brethren in the church. Sometimes you might be sick and nobody calls you up. Nobody even inquires about you being absent from church. And then you wonder where is the love of the brethren. But let me encourage you today that you are going to be in places where everybody will not display the Christ-like attitude. Everybody will not give you that Christ-like attitude, but you ought to meditate on God's word. Focus on God's word. Let discouragement be far from you. You're only human, yes, and you're going to feel hurt and disturbed at times, but ask God to remove the spirit of discouragement. Focus on his word. Meditate on his word, and God will bring you through every situation that you will face in your life. Another point that brings about discouragement is absence from church. Sometimes we get ourselves involved in some issue or another. And you think the only remedy is to stay away from God. Let me inform you this morning, viewers, that the time that we should stay with God and stay in the presence of believers and brethren is the time when we are going through hard situations. But somehow we tend to do the opposite. When we are going through the issues of our life, we tend to steer away from the church and stay away. But the Bible, the Bible clearly states about not neglecting the assembling of yourself together with the saints. The Bible continues to say that he that are strong ought to bear up or ought to bear the infirmities of them that are weak. Yes, we need each other. We can't live this Christian life alone. We can't make it alone. We need the strength of the brethren. We need the strength of the, the pastor and the deacon. We need the strength of each other to make it. One songwriter said, you pray for me, I pray for you. And then we will all be victorious in this walk. This is not a one man walk or a one woman walk. We need to walk together. The Bible states that we ought to walk together. We ought to be our brother's keeper. We ought to strengthen the hands of they that are weak. Sometimes there are those that are weak among us. And we who are strong ought to bear them up. Ought to carry them. Ought to help them along life's journey. Because when we neglect these weak ones, they become discouraged. They wonder what is the purpose of the church. Where is the love of God that should be resonating out of this place? Where is that love? They feel discouraged. They become disheartened. They become rejected, dejected. They feel that like nobody cares about them. 
Another issue that causes discouragement is people going from church to church. I gave it a name, church hopping. You know, you're not staying in any one place. Brethren, we need to sit under the, the hands of a good mentor and a good pastor and be taught of the Lord. It's not a good idea that you go to this church today and you go to that church tomorrow. It's important that we settle ourselves in God and learn and receive from the man and the woman that God will have placed over our lives spiritually. It is indeed important that we settle ourselves in God. Sit and be mentored. Sit and be taught of the word. It's important. Church hopping causes discouragement. You think that this church is not satisfying my need. I will go next door. And then you stay next door for probably a month. And then you said, no, I will go up the road. And then you said, no, I will go down in that other area. It's important as people of God that we settle ourselves in God. We settle ourselves in God. And a final issue that causes people to become discouraged even as believers is unanswered prayer. You might be praying about a situation and God has not given you the answer yet or probably God is saying wait and you thinking that God you have forgotten all about me and you become discouraged because you're looking at other people and they're probably going ahead and you're seeing them be blessed in probably the very areas that you have been waiting on God for. Let me encourage you to be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. He would indeed give you the desires of your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. It's important that we learn to wait on God. Learn to wait for God and learn to wait in God. It's important. Yes, we are living in a microwave age, but this is the only time I'm telling you that you need to wait on God. There's a blessing in waiting on God. Jumping ahead of God will do you and I no good. It's important that we learn to wait on the answer from God. Unanswered prayers sometimes cause us to forget the church and to become discouraged. But let me encourage you from the world this morning it's important to wait on God the Bible said he has good plans for you he understand the way you ought to go and it's important that you wait the Bible, the Bible declares that he has good plans in store for you he has your best interests at heart it's important that we wait on the one that has the blueprint for our lives and we don't run ahead of God. We don't try to do our own thing. We don't try to work out our own business. It's important as the people of God that we wait on God. We wait on God. Let me just go to a few points. How could I overcome? Or how could you overcome the spirit of discouragement? One, avoid sin at all costs. Let me say that again. Avoid sin at all costs. Shun the very appearance of that which is evil and run after God. Pant after God. Pant after his word. Pant after living a holy and a righteous life before God. You might say, minister, that, that's, is, that's easy for you to say. But let me tell you again, it's important. It's not a hard thing to do. God is the one that enables us to live a victorious Christian life. We can't live it by ourselves. We can't live it on our own. Allow the Holy Spirit to tabernacle in your life and cause you to live a victorious life I cannot do it by myself I cannot do it on my own I depend on the Holy Spirit to guide my every step I ask him to do the same for you he will avoid sin at all costs Two, give preeminence to the word of God and to the presence of God if ever a time we need the presence of God is now. Allow his presence to always be with you. Don't walk out of the presence of God. Leaving the presence of God is a recipe for trouble. Walk in his presence. 
Moses understood that. When he said, if your presence don't go with me, God, I will not be going. Walk under the covering of God. Walk under his mighty arm. Walk with God. Find a secret place with God. Allow God to direct your steps. The Bible still states that the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Let God order your steps this morning. Give preeminence to the word of God. Thirdly, encourage the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let the triune Godhead always be with you. Don't walk out of his anointing. It's important because as the songwriter clearly states, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that sets the captives free. It's the anointing that loose the shackles that try to keep us in sin and in bondage. Allow the Holy Spirit to take preeminence in your life. Always crave the anointing. More of his anointing, more of his power, and more of his glory. And when you continue to crave that, you will indeed dispel the power of discouragement. You will not have time to become discouraged. Because you will be walking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He is your helper. The Holy Spirit is your paracletos. He is your comforter. He is your instructor. He is your teacher. The Bible said he will lead you into paths of all truths. If we only learn to depend on the Holy Spirit, we will indeed live victorious lives. Depend on the Holy Spirit this morning. He's your advocate. He's your lawyer. He's the one that fights on your behalf. Encourage his presence. Fourthly, be active participants in the work of the Lord and in the ministry of the church. Don't just sit down and be spectators. It's important as we enter into this season of our lives in Christendom that we are active participants. God is calling people who are active. He's calling true worshipers to the front line. He said the time is now. We are entering a new season. Entering, we are entering in a new season. Let me encourage you to enter it as an active participant. Go on the days of spectators. We need to be active in the work of God. Next, you need to surround yourself with encouragers. People that will encourage you along life's path. So many times the people who are around us are the ones that discourage us and pull us down. And they are only there to tell you what you can't do and what you can't become. But this morning I'm encouraging you as you look at me. Surround yourself with people that will encourage you on your way up. Surround yourself. Have people that will push you along. Surround yourself with people who will pray you through when you get involved in ticklish situations and you need God to intervene. Surround yourself with worshipers. Surround yourself with people that know how to pray and how to be intercessors and know how to go before the throne room on your behalf. Surround yourself. Don't forget to surround yourself. Avoid the formation of cliques and people that just dare to pull down another and to pull down leadership. Surround yourself with people who are anointed and who understand what God is looking for in this season. People who when you fall, they will pull you up. And finally, seek God concerning his will for your life. So many times we don't seek God for his will concerning our life. We try to follow fashion other people's ministry. But this morning I'm here to tell you that you ought to seek God. If you only seek God, he will reveal what is his plan. What is his will for your life. And there we will be able to walk therein. But when you don't seek God, you tend to jump with every, every fashion that comes. And then finally you become discouraged and you become rejected and you feel that like nobody is interested in you and you're not going anywhere in God. 
Let me encourage you, start to seek God concerning his will for your life. Ask God to show you what is your will for my life, God. What do you want me to become? What area of ministry do you want me to become involved in? What do you expect me to be? What do you expect me to become God? Seek God for his will concerning your life. And you will indeed dispel the spirit of discouragement. That spirit that has come to keep us down as a people. That spirit that has come to tell you don't do anything. Just sit by and allow the waves to roll on by. You will indeed dispel that spirit. You will become active in the work of God. You will, you will feel that you are fulfilling your mission and calling in this life. Let me encourage you to run after God. Seek God with all your might. Meditate on the book of the law. Cause it not to depart from you day and night. If you want to make your way successful and you want to become prosperous, the recipe is to meditate on God's word. He told Joshua and it still applies to us today. We ought to do the same. Don't become discouraged in this war. This is not time to become discouraged. This is time to go up in God. This is time for upward mobility in terms of God. When you talk about God, you should be going up. God wants us to be successful. He wants us to prosper in every, in every meaning of the word, both spiritually and financially. God wants us to prosper. Don't become discouraged. Let me encourage you again this morning. I've come to dispel the power of discouragement over your life. And I've come to decree a new day and a new season. A season where you will be empowered to do that which God has called you to do. Be encouraged this morning. God is on your side. And you can be victorious in this Christian walk. Before I go, allow me the opportunity to pray with you. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks. We thank you for your people, God, that view morning by morning. Great God, continue to empower them. Continue to encourage those that feel discouraged this morning. God, let them know that you are on the side of being, building them up and allowing them to be who you have called them to be, God. We dispel the spirit of discouragement and I speak encouragement over them this morning in the name of Jesus. I decree that they will be all that you have destined for them to be in this life. God, just continue to have your way in these viewers. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, it was indeed a privilege being here with you. I am Minister Sherla Waldron, Joseph, and I will be back with you again. But until then, may the blessings and the peace of God reign in your life. Amen. Amen.